I was inspired to do this work during my internship at the Department of Pediatrics. It surprised me how often when asking parents about their child's medical history, the first thing I heard was that their child was conceived by assisted reproductive technology. I wasn't sure what to do with this information. Was it of any importance for the child's present illness? Later I learned that several studies have shown that children conceived by assisted reproductive technology are at increased risk of adverse perinatal outcomes. However, few studies dealt with these children's health and disease after the neonatal period and results have been contradicting. So to clarify what is known about assisted reproductive technology and somatic morbidity in childhood, my research group and I decided to conduct this systematic review. We included 38 studies in the review and the results indicated that children conceived by assisted reproductive technology may be at increased risk of asthma, epilepsy and convulsions, infections and genitourinary diseases. Furthermore, it seemed that children conceived by this treatment had longer hospitalizations when hospitalized than spontaneously conceived children. We found no clear association between assisted reproductive technology and cancer, pneumonia, allergy, respiratory and gastrointestinal diseases, mortality, use of medication, hospital admission or outpatient visits. So our conclusion is that children conceived by assisted reproductive technology may be at increased risk of specific somatic morbidity in childhood when compared with spontaneously conceived children and that the information about assisted reproductive technology seems to be an important part of the child's medical history. However, what is still unknown is what causes the association between assisted reproductive technology and somatic morbidity in childhood. Is it the mechanical and hormonal manipulation of the emperor and the woman doing the treatment? Or do children conceived by assisted reproductive technology more often see a doctor and therefore receive more diagnosis? Or is it due to characteristics of the subfertile couple? These are the questions we'll be working to clarify during our further research.